Greetings, it's Eric Becker, naturopath from New Zealand, author of Candida Crusher and formulator of the Canzida range of dietary supplements. Thanks for checking out part two of the video today, this video series, what to eat and what to avoid with Candida. I am um, produced these two emails for a question for a person called Tom Robert from Texas who's actually emailed me. Uh, Eric, what, what can I eat? What should I avoid? So Tom, I hope you've checked out my first video and had a good uh, look at that. So this is really part two, the foods to avoid with candida. Well, you don't need to be a rocket scientist to work out what you need to avoid with candida. You know what to avoid with candida. It's the foods that you look around and you see other people eat, other people that complain about bad health, people that complain about bloating and gas and fatigue, you know, bowel problems, people that go to the doctor, um, you know, looking for different kind of medications for relief. Most people I see say the same thing to me. I thought you were going to say that. I had a feeling you were going to tell me to stop drinking. I had a feeling you were going to tell me that I can't have three candy bars every day, you know. So every patient I see with a chronic health problem has got some kind of habit underpinning that health problem. And often there'll be a dietary indiscretion and there'll be a lifestyle indiscretion. And, and when you peel those layers back, there'll be some kind of stress underpinning that. I've spoken enough now in my videos about the relationship with stress and chronic candida. There's no doubt about it. Every single case of ongoing candida I see, there's usually some kind of unresolved issue underlying that. I had three patients from US yesterday, and one patient in particular I saw uh, has got a public service job. And I said, do you like it? He said, I hate it. I hate my job. And I said, well, why would you stay in a job that you hate? I don't know. I haven't made, you know, decided to get out of it yet. Now he's had candida for a long time. Now this guy's on an amazingly good diet, and he's been on it for some time. And he can't understand why, after three or four naturopaths and two doctors, no one's helped uh, him to resolve his problem. And basically, when I told him that the job's got to go, the diet doesn't. I think he understood what I was alluding to. So maybe you're a person looking at this right now who's on a perfect diet okay you've been to a really good naturopath or the, or the best doctor in town who's given you an incredible diet you've been to a, a, a maybe a psychotherapist or a counselor you've been to a chiropractor you've been to all these kind of people and yet you're still not right and you're still eating the best foods try and understand that it's a lot more than just food that you need to eat and to avoid to get rid of candida that's the secret that's the secret so let's delve into the foods you need to avoid now. Well, I've written quite extensively on this in my book, but I'm going to go through a list of different things that I think you know um, when I you know, read these out or mention these. These are the foods that can affect you quite badly. And it's not necessarily the quantity of these foods that you eat or the frequency of foods that you eat. It's how much you enjoy these foods. So you've got to stop the relationship that you've got with that food. You've got to stop it. So foods that we eat, are, are, are we have relationships with foods. I don't know if you realize that. Just like we have relationships with people. And sometimes people can really piss us off. We can have bad relationships with people. We can have good relationships with people. And sometimes when we sever those relationships or change them, it's like a breath of fresh air. So what food do you really enjoy eating that's a naughty food, that's a bad food, you know, it's a food that you shouldn't be eating? Is it a chocolate bar? Is it peanut butter? Is it going to the cupboard and getting a slice of bread and putting peanut butter and jam on it? Is it going to the refrigerator and having a glass of milk two or three times a day? Is it, you know, really wanting that beer or wine at the end of the day? So that's what I want you to think about right now. What food can you immediately comes to your mind that you're having on a regular basis that you know in the back of your mind you shouldn't be having, but you're thinking to yourself, well, a little bit here or there is not going to hurt me. One or two drinks a week, I'll be fine. Well, you won't be fine. Because the top of the tree on the no foods is alcohol. So if you're not prepared to stop alcohol, even one drink per week, then just turn this video off now and go and look at one of those funny cat videos or something, all right? Because it's not really going to make any difference to me. All right? You're not going to get well. You're not going to get well. You've got to stop that relationship, all right? <clears throat> so it's not just a matter of saying to you, Here's all the foods you avoid. Because if I gave you a list now of 25 foods to avoid, I can guarantee if you went down the column, you could put a circle around one food that you find hard to avoid. 
and that's the problem all right so confectionery particularly so a little bit of alcohol then we're going to look at things like lollies or candies or confectionery chocolates or biscuits any kind of sweet foods like that you know that are really full of uh, full of sugar i'm no fan of um chewing gum either I, I tend to avoid chewing gum i think it's a bad habit chewing 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 all the time you see people at airports or you know i see a lot of employees for companies sitting there chewing taxi drivers uh, bus drivers, bored people, frustrated people, they sit there chewing. Uh, very bad. You're giving your stomach all these bad signals that food's coming. You're swallowing saliva laden with artificial sugars. You know, these are neurotoxins. So avoid chewing gum. You don't need it. And it's the same with that candy bar. If you go shopping, you don't need to buy that candy bar when you're sitting there waiting at the checkout. You know, a lot of these things are just habits that, that you've accumulated. So again, you need to make some changes with these relationships, with these habits cut them out of your life so we've talked about candy we've talked about chocolate we've talked about biscuits cookies cakes slices uh, all these kinds of foods again full of creams and colors and sugars uh, with trans saturated fats uh, you know all these these margarine in them all this crap you don't really need lots of refined uh, sugar and flour processed uh, peanuts in there and grains and junk so when you buy a, pa a packet of cookies and keep it in the cupboard for six months, it's probably still okay to eat. You know, chewing gum will keep for years. It shows you how processed this food is. As they say, all the food in the middle of the supermarket is a highly processed food. That's the stuff you want to avoid. You know, you've probably heard it before. You only buy on what's on the perimeter, the perishables, the food that goes off quick, because that's the food that's healthy for the body. So foods to avoid include, in the first few weeks of candida, if you've got a bad yeast infection, you need to be careful of grains. All right, too much wheat, too much rye, any kind of grain too much of it could upset uh, your digestion when you're trying to switch into a, a tied dietary approach, especially if you eat too much of it. Avoid those sort of foods. In the previous video, I said avoid pumpkin, squash, sweet potato, carrot, uh, and uh, sweet corn. These foods in the first two or three weeks. When you're switching from a non-candida diet to a candida diet, just slowly cut these things out and focus more on the greens, leafy greens. Just be careful with your grains. When you're switching into a candida diet, I want you to focus on chewing food properly, getting to bed on time, taking plenty of enzymes, learning how to relax more, and improving your gut function, improving the digestive capabilities of your gut so it can handle a better quality diet. Because digesting food is quite hard and tough on the body. Right. The focus also is on really improving the bowel tone and having really good bowel motions because most American patients and European patients I see as well as Australia and New Zealand have a bowel motion maybe every day, maybe every second day. Constipation is endemic. So you want to have, in my opinion, two bowel motions per day as a minimum um, you know, if, if you've got a very good uh, gut function. So takeaway food. Do you often go to the shop and buy uh, takeaway chicken, <clears throat> you know, deep fried chicken, for example, or pizzas, uh, even these greasy Asian meals or things like that. So be careful of takeaway foods. You know, they are convenient, but they're not convenient for your digestive system. Tin foods, packet foods, anything in boxes or packets or tins. I do use occasionally tin food, but it may be sardines or salmon, but most of the food that I cook and consume is all fresh and raw foods, uh, you know, that'll turn into, into meals. So the fresher and cleaner you eat, and the more you avoid the processed foods, the more you're going to increase your digestive capacity, the better the enzymes will work, and you'll also produce more enzymes, and the better the bowel function will be, because you'll also produce better, or more of the beneficial bacteria. So remember, you've got anywhere between 500 to 1,000 species of bacteria in the gut, and they shape and form themselves depending on the stresses and, and also the diet. When you improve your diet, you can slowly improve the bowel flora. When you can improve the bowel flora, you can crowd out the candida, the cyber infections, uh, and your health will really improve in a seriously big way because all the health starts from the inside out, the gut. So I think you know by now what foods you want to avoid, right? You want to avoid the foods that you know you shouldn't eat. And most people know that by now. You can read a lot more in my book, Candida Crusher. I've, I've written over 100 pages um, on, on these sorts of foods. 
I prefer to talk more about what you can eat rather than what you can't eat. All right? That's more important to me. Another heads up for you on what you shouldn't be doing, in my opinion, is cooking meals and then covering them with saran wrap or clean film when they're cold, placing them in the refrigerator and then microwaving them the following day to heat them up. I think that is a no-no because the bacteria and molds and fungi will grow on that food overnight. It's not fresh meal anymore. Cook a meal, consume it, eat it. If you don't do that, then freeze it straight away, deep freeze it. And I prefer oven warming rather than microwave. I don't really like microwaves at all. Sauces, that's another thing that I didn't mention, is watch out for tomato sauce. When we say tomato sauce down here. So tomato sauce, chili sauce, ketchup, any of these kind of sauces. If I went to your house now and opened your refrigerator, how many bottles would I see or jars that have been sitting in there for weeks, if not months? I guarantee you there'll be a few, if you know what I mean. There'll be lots of different jars in there. Lots of people have got these jars lying all around the place. You know? And these things are mold traps, they're fungal traps, they're bacterial traps. So try not to do that. Use something and then throw it away. When you're going into a transition stage with a healthy diet, Try not to use any kind of sauces at all, right? I've got only one sauce in my house, and that's tamari. I use it for quite a bit of tamari, which is a, a Japanese kind of a soy sauce. Um, and I use sea salt, and I use cracked pepper, and I use a lot of different dried herbs and fresh herbs. But I prefer not to use tomato sauce, chili sauce, shrimp sauce, oyster sauce, um, all these sort of sauces. You know, they're not really good. We only tend to have a little bit of them, and we keep the bottles for too long and accumulate them. So we spoke about... Okay, confectionery, we spoke about things like ice cream, chocolate, all this sort of junk, cakes, biscuits, slices. Uh, we spoke about alcohol, which is the first thing I mentioned. We spoke about not reheating food. Um, we spoke about sauces and bottles and little things like that. So what the hell does it leave you with? Well, it leaves you with a diet that your great-grandparents probably had. All right, It leaves you with a diet that's fresh vegetables, fresh fruits, and fresh uh, proteins, meats. Uh, or legumes, or nuts, or seeds. Uh, there are plenty of foods you can eat, and combinations of these foods. I'm just going to give you a little plug here about my new product I've developed called Kenzida Restore. So Kenzida Restore took me a long time to make. I had to really have a good think about the different combinations that were going to be most beneficial for patients, the best enzymes to facilitate you know, digestive recovery and improvement, uh, and the best probiotics. So I selected seven enzymes and six probiotics, and I've kept the fructooligosaccharides and the inulin out. So there's no prebiotics in this. And I call that product Kanzita Restore. It partners up beautifully with Kanzita Remove, which is an antifungal, antibacterial, antiparasite product. So that's in a tablet. It's a really difficult product to make the uh, Kanzita Remove. I've, I've, I've had to work with several manufacturers now to find someone who can really do the job properly because it's not an easy product. Anything new, a uh, new formulation, uh, particularly herbal, is very difficult to make if it's never been made before. And I can tell you it's super effective. We've had so much good feedback from Kenzita Remove. But when you partner that tablet now up with the capsule, the Kenzita Restore, you're going to get an even better effect because they work perfectly together. So check out my site, Kenzita Restore, uh, sorry, Kenzita Restore, uh, Kenzita.com. And also be sure to have another good look at yeastinfection.org. There's over a thousand articles on that site now. Have you done my quiz yet? My Candida Crusher quiz? You can do that through yeastinfection.org. If you like this kind of information, please subscribe to this channel because I'm very keen to uh, build the channel more and give you some more videos. I've got some more topics to do uh, you know, from people just like Tom. So if you, if you send me a message through YouTube, uh, comment on the kind of videos you would like. I'll be glad to uh, accommodate you uh, with that because your channel is all about helping people out. So I hope this has been of some benefit for you. Thanks for tuning in.